questions that I ask almost everybody. Um, I've been curious how in the world of Tibetan Buddhism the relationship of devotion or the trajectory to devotion differs from a bias towards cult issues. To what, what? A bias towards cult issues. In other words, how is devotion cult issues? Cult issues. Like to be a member of a cult. Oh, there's nothing to do, yeah. Because member of the cult, there's someone there who wish to be <laughs> adulated and who has a lot to lose or a lot to gain from being adulated or not. He's so worried if people don't adulate him or her. So worried if someone leaves. I mean, a, a genuine spiritual teacher has nothing to care. It's nothing to lose and nothing to gain from having one disciple or no disciple at all, or thousands of disciples. Could not care less. I mean, in terms of, I don't know, it's kind of, you know, being sort of consistent about it or thinking I have that much disciples and blah, 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 and I have to keep them. I mean, what could care less? I mean, the, a real enlightened teacher cares for all sentient beings in general, but for himself or herself, just stay in a cave and sitting in the hermitage is fine. Nothing, not, no more, nothing needed. No need for recognition, no need for praise. Even you praise them, they think it's just a praise of virtue, not of themselves. If you criticize them, then there's, if there's some defect, they will try to uproot it. So they're not hopes and fear about praise and blame. I mean, the eight-worldly concerns are gone from their mind, like pleasure and pain, uh, gain and loss, praise and criticism, and uh, fame and, and uh, you know, obscurity. So they can't care less. So they have no concern for those things. So if someone needs help and ask for help, then they're just available. But cult, there's always somebody who cares so much about being consider as a you know, guru or whatever. But then the whole thing is sort of messed up. So now devotion is not, should never be sort of blind faith. It's as the Dalai Lama always says, you know, if somebody is really totally against the teachings, against the Buddhist teaching, why should you follow that person? You come to that person to know about the Buddhist teaching. Say that person is cheating others and this and that. And so of course, pure vision means that sometimes an action like of the great sea that, that looks against uh, ordinary convention and is, is as a profound motive behind for helping the beings. So in very, very exceptional cases, that's the case of the very enlightened teacher. But first of all, those are very rare. Second, it's a too easy an excuse to behave in completely ordinary ways. But in fact, no, I don't think those great teachers, I mean, there's no mistake about that. I mean, when you have a teacher of that level, like the great Mahasiddhas, I mean, the devotion flows always so spontaneously. And then there's no difficulty to have this pure vision because they are so perfect. And then you know when they are maybe strict or they, they look angry when they are not really. I mean, it's just like to help you to overcome some obstacles. So it takes place in a context that's quite different from ordinary relations because then the teacher is very enlightened. So you may say, you may think the teacher is enlightened when it is not, and then you be as ordinary way, and then you start uh, trying to, to see it as pure, although maybe it's just ordinary motive, motivations. But that's why it says you have to look for a right teacher. I mean, th in the scripture it says you have to look for 12 years, for examine for 12 years, the teacher should examine the, disciple, examine the teacher, and disciple, uh, the teacher should examine the disciple. So that might be a bit long, in, uh, seems long in our days, but that's what the scripture say. So it means, I think, <laughs> in, I don't know, 12 years maybe, but in some cases at least you know, not jumping blindly because somebody said something or somebody looks charismatic or this and that, at least a minimum of good common sense to see if that person, first of all, is a real good human being. And if according to the sutras and tantras he has the qualities of a, of a, of a, of a teacher, then seek closer if that his behavior in general, not necessarily toward us, before he might use skillful means with us, just in general, how, how, what, is, what is he doing? Is that in accordance with the Dharma? Does it out of pure compassion? Specifically compassion, high religion and compassion together. Otherwise, you know, people 
said they have seen this and that and vision of this and that and you know first of all just saying this already is a good is a bad sign because I mean the great teacher usually never say anything about their realization they always say until me the lineage was very pure and Kensei Moshe would say that until my teacher they're all enlightened beings I'm just ordinary person but I have this carry this very precious lineage I never seen any of those real great teachers saying anything good about themselves in terms of you know, saying they have this quality, that quality, they did this, this, and they did so many years of retreat. People who know them knows they did 30 years retreat or 40 years retreat. But they are not, unless you really push them to tell a bit a story of their life, but otherwise they never sort of put forward that they did that much practice and, they, and so forth and so forth. They don't get letters of recommendation from anybody they don't <laughs> because they hate promoting themselves to start with. I mean, all this, I don't, I don't know, I, but... I think for great teachers it's obvious. So then, if that sometimes the great teacher is a bit strict, then you can see with that with pure vision that he's doing that for your own good. So I think pure vision should be there. It's necessary, we say. I think every, whatever the teacher does as, as pure and, and correct, but that implies to have found an authentic teacher. So that's where we, it's our responsibility is. If we don't look carefully, and develop this pure vision, and then it happens that is, you know, we put our confidence in the wrong place. Well, partly we are to blame for being just, uh, you know, too credulous or not having thoroughly investigated. Investigated doesn't investigation doesn't mean having a negative outlook on anybody in the world. It's just, you know, because we should have loving kindness and openness to all sentient beings. So we are not trying to be caustic, negative critical, just open eyes. Is that person maybe learned or did some practice? Or is he really a, a, a qualified teacher? Just we're just looking for a qualified teacher. We're not disparaging those who are not. We're just trying to, among all the possibilities, to find someone who is an authentic teacher. Nothing wrong with other people. They are just more or less like us, some probably much better than us, but still they are not a, a, a genuine spiritual teacher. So then we just see them as Dharma friends, as other sentient beings who try to get out of suffering and, and then try to have completely positive attitudes toward everybody, yet we don't need to take them as spiritual teacher. So then something like that.